Page 95, After School. I hear we're driving you home today. It was Miranda in eighth period. She had just sat down at the desk right behind me. I had forgotten that mom had called Miranda's mother the night before to ask if she could drive me home from school. You don't have to, I answered instinctively, casually. My mom can pick me up. I thought she had to pick up Augie after some, or something. It turns out she, she can pick me up afterwards. She just texted me. Not a problem. Oh, okay. Thanks. It was all a lie on my part, but I couldn't see sitting in a car with the new Miranda. After school, I ducked into a restroom to avoid bumping into Miranda's mother outside. Half an hour later, I walked out of the school, ran the three blocks to the bus stop, hopped on the M86 to Central Park West, and took the subway home. Hey there, sweetie, Mom said the moment I stepped through the front door. How was your first day? I was starting to wonder where you guys were. We stopped for pizza. Incredible how easily a lie can slip through your lips. Is Miranda not with you? She seemed surprised that Miranda wasn't right behind me. She went straight home. We, we have a lot of homework. On your first day? Yeah, on our first day, I yelled, which completely surprised Mom. But before she could say anything, I said, School was fine. It's really big, though. The kids seem nice. I wanted to give her enough information so she wouldn't feel the need to ask me more. How was Augie's first day of school? Mom hesitated, her eyebrows still high up on her forehead from when I'd snapped at her a second earlier. Okay, she said slowly, like she was letting out a breath. What do you mean, okay, I said. Was it good or bad? He said it was good. So why do you think it wasn't good? I, I didn't say it wasn't good. Jeez, Via, what's up with you? Just, just forget I asked anything at all, I answered and stormed dramatically into Augie's room and slammed the door. He was on his PlayStation and didn't even look up. I hated how zombified his video games made him. So how was school? I said, scooching Daisy over so I could sit on her bed next to him. Fine, he answered, still not looking up from his game. Augie, I'm talking to you. I pulled the PlayStation out of his hands. Hey, he said angrily. How was school? I said fine, he yelled back, grabbing the PlayStation back from me. Were, were people nice to you? Yes. No one was mean? He put the PlayStation down and looked up at me, as if I had just asked the dumbest question in the world. Why would people be mean, he said. It was the first time in his life that I heard him be sarcastic like that. I didn't think he had it in him. Page 97. The Padawan Bites the Dust. I'm not sure at what point that night Augie had cut off his Padawan braid or why that made me really mad. I had always found his obsession with everything Star Wars kind of geeky, and that braid in the back of his hair with its little beads was just awful. But he had always been so proud of it, of how long it took him to grow it, of how he had chosen the beads himself in a craft store in Soho. He and Christopher, his best friend, used to play with lightsabers and Star Wars stuff whenever they got together, and they had both started growing their braids at the same time. When August cut his braid off that night, without an explanation, without telling me beforehand, which was surprising, or even calling Christopher, I was just so upset I can't even explain why. I've seen August brushing his hair in the bathroom mirror. He meticulously tried to get every hair in place. He tilts his head to look at himself from different angles, like there's some magic perspective inside the mirror that could change the dimensions of his face. Mom knocked on my door after dinner. She looked drained, and I realized that between me and Augie, today had been a tough day for her, too. So, you want to tell me what's up? She asked nicely, softly. Not now, okay? I answered. I was reading. I was tired. Maybe later I'd be up to telling her about Miranda, but not now. I'll check in before you go to bed, she said, and then she came over and kissed me on the top of my head. Can Daisy sleep with me tonight? Sure. I'll bring her in later. Don't forget, don't forget to come back, I said as she left. I promise. But she didn't come back that night. Dad did. He told me Augie had had a bad first day and Mom was helping him through it. 
He asked me how my day had gone, and I told him fine. He said he didn't believe me for a second, and I told him Miranda and Ella were acting like jerks. I didn't mention how I took the subway home by myself, though. He said nothing tests friendships like high school, and then proceeded to poke fun at the fact that I was reading War and Peace. Not real fun, of course, since I'd heard him brag to people that he had a 15-year-old who was reading Tolstoy. But he liked to rib me about where I was in the book, in a war part or in a peace part, and if there was anything in there about Napoleon's days as a hip-hop dancer. It was silly stuff, but Dad always managed to make everyone laugh. And sometimes, that's all you need to feel better. Don't be mad at Mom, he said as he bent down to give me a goodnight kiss. You know how much she worries about Augie. I know, I acknowledged. Want the light off on? Or, or on? It's getting kind of late, he said, pausing by the light, switch at the door. Can you bring Daisy in first? Two seconds later, he came back with Daisy, dangling in his arms, and he laid her down next to me on the bed. Good night, sweetheart, he said, kissing my forehead. He kissed Daisy on her forehead, too. Good night, girly. Sweet dreams. Page 99. An apparition at the door. Once, I got up in the middle of the night because I was thirsty, and I saw Mom standing outside Augie's room. Her hand was on the doorknob, her forehead leaning on the door, which was ajar. She wasn't going in his room or stepping out just standing right outside the door, as if she was listening to the sound of his breathing as he slept. The hallway lights were out. The only thing illuminating her was a blue nightlight in August's bedroom. She looked ghost-like standing there, or maybe I should say angelic. I tried to walk back into my room without disturbing her, but she heard me and walked over to me. Is August okay? I asked. I knew that sometimes he would wake up choking on his own saliva if he accidentally turned over on his back. Oh, he's fine, she said, wrapping her arms around me. She walked me back into my room, pulled the covers over me, and kissed me goodnight. She never explained what she was doing outside his door, and I never asked. I wonder how many nights she stood outside his door, and I wonder if she's ever stood outside more at my door like that. Page 100. Breakfast. Can you pick me up some, uh, from the school today, I said the next morning, smearing some cream cheese on my bagel. Mom was making August lunch. American cheese on whole wheat bread, soft enough for Augie to eat. While August sat eating oatmeal at the table, Dad was getting ready to go to work. Now that I was in high school, the new school routine was going to be that Dad and I would take the subway together in the morning, which meant his having to leave 15 minutes earlier than usual. Then I'd get off at my stop, and he'd keep going. And Mom was going to pick me up after school in the car. I was going to call Miranda's mother to see if she could drive you home again, Mom answered. No, Mom, I said quickly. You pick me up, or I'll just take the subway. You know I don't want you to take the subway by yourself yet, she answered. Mom, I'm 15. Everybody my age takes the subway by themselves. She can take the subway home, said Dad from the other room, adjusting his tie as he stepped into the kitchen. Why can't Miranda's mother just pick her up again, Mom argued with him. She's old enough to take the subway by herself, Dad insisted. Mom looked at both of us. Is something going on? She didn't address her question to either one of us in particular. You would know if you had come back to check on me, I said spitefully. Like you said you would. Oh, goodness, Via, said Mom, remembering now she had completely ditched me last night. She put down the knife she was using to cut Augie's grapes in half, still a choking hazard for him because of the size of his palate. I am so sorry. I fell asleep in Augie's room. By the time I woke up, I know, I know, I nodded indifferently. Mom came over, put her hands on my cheeks, and lifted my face to look at her. I'm really, really sorry, she whispered. I could tell she was. It's okay, I said. Via, Mom, it's fine. This time I meant it. She looked so genuine, genuinely sorry. I just wanted to let her off the hook. She kissed and hugged me, then returned to the grapes. So, is something going on with Miranda, she asked. Just, just that she's acting like a complete jerk, I said. Miranda's not a jerk, 
Augie quickly chimed in. She can be, I yelled. Believe me. Okay, then. I'll pick you up. No problem, Mom said decisively, sweeping the half grapes into a snack bag with a side of her knife. That was the plan Sorry. all along. Anyway, I'll pick Augie up from school in the car, and then we'll pick you up. We'll probably get there about a quarter to four. No, I said firmly, before she'd even finished. Isabel, she can take the subway, said Dad impatiently. She's a big girl now. She's reading War and Peace, for crying out loud. What does War and Peace have to do with anything, answered Mom, clearly annoyed. It means you don't have to pick her up in the car like she's a little girl, he said sternly. Via, are you ready? Get your bag and let's go. I'm ready, I said, pulling on my backpack. Bye, Mom. Bye, Augie. I kissed them both quickly and headed toward the door. Do you even have a Metro card? Mom said after me. Of course she has a Metro card, answered Dad, fully exasperated. Sheesh, Mama, stop worrying so much. Bye, he said, kissing her on the cheek. Bye, big boy, he said to August, kissing him on the top of his head. I'm proud of you. Have a good day. Bye, Daddy. You too. Dad and I jogged down the stoop stairs and headed down the block. Call me after school before you get on the subway, Mom yelled at me from the window. I didn't even turn around, but waved my hand at her so she'd known I'd heard her. Dad did turn around, walking backwards for a few steps. War and peace, Isabel, he called out, smiling as he pointed at me. War and peace.